And then we begin a series of uh, handling the season by the grace of God. We shall go live tomorrow uh, in all our social media setups. I have been trying to set the gadgets to go live and it has taken too much of my time. So I'm doing this first series um, on, a not, on a normal camera then uh, we shall catch it up tomorrow live on all our social media platforms by the grace of God. Amen. I feel composed in this season um, and my spirit is very excited by what the Lord is accomplishing. It is such an exciting moment and uh, my heart is very, very excited. You know, I've always said, um, these are the days our fathers of faith, people like Abraham, uh, Isaac, and Jacob decided to live in. And, uh, you know, the Bible says they died hoping and waiting. You know, they, they really uh, decided to live in these days. So, uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we worship, and honor you. You are worthy to be exalted. You are worthy to be glorified. You alone is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so, Father, we decide to be on your side and uh, to be for you. Father, we decide to uh, be sold out to you. We remain there in the shelter of the Most High. And Lord, we appreciate you for what you are doing and what you have in store for us. In the name of Jesus, you alone is the king of glory. You alone is the king of kings. You alone is the great I am. You alone, Father, you alone. You alone, you alone. Ha, Ramazi, Kata, Ramazi. I don't know about you, but he means everything to me. He's all that I need in my life. He has done me well. Jehovah God has done me well. You can confess it with me this particular moment. The Lord has done as well. He has really done as well. And so we appreciate him uh, for who he is and who he has proved to be to us. We, we cannot doubt. We cannot doubt. Uh, because God has really been so, so good and faithful. He did not give us to the desires of our enemies. He did not allow the enemy to destroy us. You know, he has carried us through. And I have always said, I will team up with a singer in my nation who has sung and said, you know, I did not know how I made it through. But because of him, I made it through. Hallelujah. It is by him, in him, and for him. It is all about him. So I want to begin um, a, a journey, yeah, even as um, we have taken charge of the gates. Uh, we did that from the month of October. It's when the gate was wide open for the next chapter of this season. And so we took charge. We have been fasting and loving the Lord and waiting on him. If you're doing it in January, it is okay. <laughs> but we did it a long time ago. Uh, when the Lord said the, the gate is wide open, we were alerted before. And uh, so we, we took charge. And uh, it's, it's very, very important to be able to fit in the seasons of God. Hallelujah. I did a video and um, just to uh, summarize the season, I knew God would allow me to handle it uh, bit by bit and um, so that we, uh, we remain ready. We remain ready. You, you know, I was very excited when the Spirit of God told me, you know, he has, Jehovah God is likening this season uh, with how we, we have remained prepared for the second coming of Jesus. And that's how he has likened the season. So um, just like the way we remain ready, uh, like the five wise virgin girls, our lamps are full of oil. We have, you know, extra for the miles ahead uh, because uh, you know, we don't know when our garment of the wedding is, we, we refuse that it will be soiled. So it is sparkling white. That is how it should be. Uh, Jesus is coming for a church without wrinkles or spots. Uh, so we must be able to remain there by the grace of God. And um, wow, my spirit, my prophetic hope is very, very excited. 
by what the Lord is accomplished. The year has begun uh, on, on a very high note. Uh, and uh, so as, I, as I'm, I'm speaking to us, I'm hearing the Spirit of God say, and the expectations of a righteous man will never be cut off. Our expectations will not be cut off as long as they are in line with the purposes of God. As long as they are in line with the purposes of God, let our desires and our expectations be in line with the, with the, the purposes of God. Because uh, we are still in a season of our fulfillment and uh, we must be able to align ourselves even as the Lord is aligning us for his own glory. So I'm coming live to, to us um, on behalf of the JPGM media. Somebody was asking, what is JPGM? JPGM is an umbrella church, um, or, uh, an umbrella uh, for, for, for church ministers and ministries that is called the Jubilee Prophetic Global Movement. Um, so that is what the Lord has called me to do. And he gave me the name some years back for his own glory. So I want us to um, begin a journey uh, of recapping and, uh, you know, getting hold of the season. And um, I, I began with us uh, in the year 2002. Uh, when, God began, when God began taking me a journey uh, that many people in my life did not understand. Uh, as some of you out there, you have gone through hitbacks and setbacks. I remember the confrontational issues I had those days uh, because I could hear this direction and the people around my life were hearing something very, very different. I remember uh, being summoned and uh, being commanded to sit in a certain meeting and what I heard uh, from the people I trusted with my life then, it was very, very heartbreaking. And God gave me the boldness. And I said, God is not saying that. Those were many years ago. And uh, it did not go well because all the others were men uh, with them. Uh, they couldn't understand. And to my, my, to my amazement, <laughs> just uh, about two weeks ago, after all those years, uh, one of the men, after all those years, one of the men sent me a message and he told me, I love your commitment, I love your zeal, I love your resilience. And I responded back and I said, this is what many of you never understood. I did not call myself what is happening and what used to happen that time is what now you are seeing the manifestation of what you are seeing this time. And I really thank God. I don't know about you. Maybe you are, you are serving God has been very rosy. For some of us, we have grown through those. You know, we have grown among us the thorns and, uh, and so many difficult things. But one thing I thank God for is that whatever he allows some of us to go through and anything he has allowed us to go, you know, to pass through at the end of the day, he has jealously regarded his anointing in our lives and protected us and, and brought us out stronger than the way it was. Let me tell you, uh, in, some of the, in some of these instances, the devil thought, now I have won it. I, I have won it. My God, uh, less than two years ago, I went through something in my life and I, this one, I was like, God, God, I am a done case. You know, I am a done case. I, I never saw my ministry recover. I, I never I never saw, you know, wow, I, I cried myself out. I moaned. I groaned. I was like, God, Father, where were you? And one day, God just silenced me in October last year. And he told me, daughter, it's me who allowed you to go through this journey. And because of the assignment, I have called you. It's me who allowed. So it's not the devil here. There's no devil here actually God told me even the, the person involved in the whole thing does not know what is happening you know, to, to, to them. They are not even aware what is happening because why? It is me who are out because why? I wanted you to see the filthiness on the altar and what, what many people are going through uh, and unaware. And uh, I changed how I pray for the church from that time. I really changed how I pray for the church. And uh, let me tell you, uh, I've seen people go to the grave because of um, 
some of the situations and circumstances i've seen people give up their walk of faith i've seen people say uh, uh, anything to do with salvation anything to think to do with god but let me tell you the god who began the good work in our lives will always bring it into accomplishment when you see some of us uh you know coming live and you know ministering to you it is not because it has not it has been rosy even the journey of jesus was not here on earth it was not rosy uh it's the journey of joseph a typology of jesus christ it was not true so never be lied by anybody this walk of i mean walk of faith and the walk i mean at the making of a minister the making of a vessel it has never been easy it has never been easy jesus being a son of god is going through it all hallelujah even the high in the hands even imagine people conspiring to kill him to stone him to kill him yet he has done nothing wrong so and that's why when he's hanging with the cross he's saying it is finished so none of us none of us us should give up my god my god hey, hey, hey. <laughs> at one point you know there are three things that have happened in my life <laughs> at one point I, I asked god father so where do i preach and how do i preach how <laughs> where do i preach and how do i preach and the lord tells me one of the one of the things that god told me <laughs> i'm working on you i thought god is working on a you know on the on the people concerned around whatever is happening but God says, I'm working on it. It's you. It's the, the best I'm working on. <laughs> hallelujah. And, and so, my God, hallelujah. I remember the other day I was telling you, uh, you know, the other time I, I, I went through something in the hands of people I trusted, you know, ministers of the gospel. And my God, I was like, God, I can't, this one, I, I can't, I can't comprehend. And, and, I, well, I, and, and I was like, God, why me? You know, that bit in mercy and you, you know, that you feel in mercy and you're like, God, why? And I'm looking at, I'm the youngest among these people. I, I, you know, why? I, the way I was devoted and committed. Why, Lord? And God tells me, uh -uh. you know, I, I literally had said, I will lie on the altar until he God answers me and just lying there a few seconds he tells me rise up stop your nonsense <laughs> You know, you know, he did not tell me something nice, but he said, you no, know, he's, he's looking at me as like, ha, ah. you know, and, and he tells me, rise up. It's me who has done this. It is for your good. And, you know, the audible voice was very clear. I shook off my dust and I packed my things and I came back to my house and, and I celebrated, you know, the festive season with my children. Otherwise, I would have mourned forever. Even when some people are coming to apologize and to seek for, I don't know for what. I had already grown on above that. So why do I give these testimonies? Because I could, I don't even know why I'm saying what I'm saying right now. I don't know. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't give up. Don't give in. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't give in. Hallelujah. I've seen God, you know, help me pick up the broken pieces in my life, particularly as a woman. Oh my God. And rise up. And my God. And live. And I, you know, I, I tell people we are not hustling, we are living. You know, we are living. Hallelujah. Because let me tell you, my brethren, you know, the Bible says, you know, I, I love that even seeing that that I say, the Paul is saying, I no longer live. You know, we no longer live. We no longer live. You know, when he died, we died with him. When he selected, we selected with him. And you know, the Bible says, where he is seated, we are seated with him. Oh my God, hallelujah. And you know, the other portion that excites my spirit is like the Bible says, you know, we are hidden with Christ in God. So when our father is seeing Jesus, he's seeing us in him. So anything else that is out of the Hura Babu and all ever down here and all those things, you know, Jesus hanging on the cross, he finished it all. And that's why he's telling the disciples, I have overcome the world. And that's why the Bible says we put on him, put on Christ. <laughs> so uh, at the end of the day, and, and now I know, <laughs> now I know, you know, Jesus, at one point, he looks at Peter and he tells Peter, you know, Satan has sought permission to, to shift you like wheat. You know, Satan is on a mission about your life. And uh, Jesus is telling Peter, but I have prayed for you. And uh, that prayer did not hinder Paul from, I mean, Peter from going through what he was supposed to do. Because Jesus is telling Peter, when you have overcome... <laughs> 
encourage your brethren, depending on the version of your Bible. That means the prayer of Jesus was there, and I thank God for that, because even today as we are going through whatever we are going through, Jesus, the Bible says he seated on the right hand, on the right hand of the Father, and what he's doing there, he's interceding for us. So he's still praying for us, even as you go through what you're going through. Regina, I'm still interceding for you, hallelujah. And at times even when I'm not able to pray, Jesus, I thank you because... <laughs> You you went through it. Now you are interceding for me. I'm now going through it. You intercede for me. And uh, Jesus is telling Peter, when you have gone through it, when you have, you know, when you have overcome this one, Peter, encourage your brethren. Hallelujah. So when we, you see us, you know, uh, excited, you come to us, you are crying and everything and all that. And you realize, wow, somebody is not moved. You know, somebody is not in panic. Somebody is not, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know, um, you know, harassed by the situation. Is because, my God, every situation is an experience. An experience. And let me tell you, church, in the things of God, you know, you learn your lessons by experience experience. You learn your lessons by experience. Let me tell you, and this is what you are seeing even in the ministry of Jesus. All the people like Joseph, you run your experience. These classes of God, you know, you you cannot you cannot uh, uh you, you nobody can uh, can can uh, can corrupt so that you you are given a certificate without you know without you are you are going through your own process. This one nobody can pay anywhere for you to be given or you cannot buy a certificate, and that's why you realize the people who are trying to go that direction of, of shortcuts and whatever so they have to go now to seek for other powers and uh, help from other quarters so that they can maintain it because why that, that one you get easily you, you <laughs> through shortcuts you'll have to work hard very hard you know canary to be able to maintain it and uh, i really thank god i really thank god so why am i saying this why is the lord allowing me to say this just to encourage you no matter how things are don't give in don't give up it it was not easy for people like Shadrach, Meshach, and Amenero, you know, to see the fire that has been even in seven times. And they, are, they, they have the flesh as we do. And, and they are saying, King, may you live forever. That direction we cannot go. Despite anything, even if our God does not, you know, save us, we you shall not, you know, we have made up our minds. Hallelujah. You know, I, I like it. And when we are talking about the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, let me tell you, the, the fire we have gone through, maybe it is too small, you you know, compared to whatever those people, uh, maybe those people went through. When you talk about the God of Daniel, my God, you know, you can see down there the arrivals. And Daniel is not even seeking for help. And, and because he faithfully served, you know, in, the, in that kingdom. And, uh, you know, he lived purely before God. So he had no panic in him. And uh, this is the kind of a level God is getting us into in these edge times. God is getting us there. And uh, you, you realize, oh my God, I no longer live. I you know I I am composed, I'm okay. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, my God, hallelujah. We have books written and uh, we we are this year you're going to see them in Amazon, you're going to read them. Uh, because God was waiting for some of us to go through uh, last chapters of some stories so that we can conclude the books <laughs> and have them printed for generations to read in Jesus studies. Because let me tell you, wow, when I read the story of people like Catherine Coleman, I'm like, Jehovah God, hi, Jehovah, hey, even you, God. <laughs> And other people who have gone ahead of us, you know, you're like, oh God, hi Jehovah, hallelujah. So God is so, so faithful. So I come to you born again in love with the Lord. This girl is a lover of God. I'm not living for any other thing. I'm living for God, me and everything about me. Oh my God, we are sold out to God. You know, it's all about him. This is the reason why I was born. This is the reason why I am alive today and i cannot exchange my salvation for anything no matter what hallelujah oh my god hallelujah and i thank god that uh, you know he has called me to be able to come live and encourage you and uh, you know give some of these testimonies no matter what i was somebody you know i found somebody hawking on the street of nairobi and she called out my name she i ministered to her somewhere and prophetess wow i'm here come mom and i'm like wow how I encouraged her, you know, she thought I would not go, and I, I, I prayed for her, and I told her one day I walked on the streets of Nairobi. <laughs> 
One day, I, I hooked passion fruits. I used to get them supply, you know, the, the, the stock from my place called Vika. I, 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 I hoped, you know, on the streets of Nairobi. I have gone office to office selling biros, you know, like these. And I, I have sold, uh, you know, pattern art. Uh, there, there, there are some... Um, Pumpkins, the small ones called butternuts. I have sold them with sacks. Hallelujah. You know, I have gone around the offices after work. I used to work those, you know, in offices those days. And I used to sell slimming belts by God after in the evening so that I can have food for the children. You know, I can go home before the, 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 the salary because the salary was not enough. So we have done all those things. We have, you know, we have gone all those, those, those we have gone through all those things. You know, in the process of making prophetess. So I encouraged them telling her I've sold I even showed her where I was selling on the street of Nairobi. <laughs> You know, and, and I was still born again, and I was still very prayerful. And, and uh, you know, you know, I, I've been homeless. I have, I've been auctioned. So I don't know. I don't know what I have not gone through. So we have been there. We have been there. I know my story may not be, you know, may, 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 yours may be better. You know, maybe yours may be better. Even where I grew up, yours may be better. So there are people out there. Maybe somebody is looking at their lives. They are almost giving up in salvation. I remember at one one time I told God, Father, not once, not twice, I told God, Father, you know I'm a woman. Now the kind of journey you are giving me, this is for a man. I'm not a man. I, Father, remember I am a woman. You know, you will find yourself in some places, you're like, my God, I am homeless on the streets of Nairobi and I am a woman, you know, and in this Nairobi, there are men with money and God is not allowing them to look for men and to look, to look for even for help, for help from anybody. You are just a whole man, homeless. Child, hallelujah. We have been in there, and uh, you are. <laughs> I remember one of uh, that time I was homeless. I had an international mission, and I was using bus. And remember, I told you the story. And I had no enough fare even to go for the mission. I remember a bus burning. You know, you know, in a, in a I cannot in Busia, yeah, a, a, a bus burned. You know, on our way to Uganda, and uh, I, I I got a platform now to encourage people, build them, and I caught some two people. I told them, I know our bus has been burned. And all those things, and now because I did not, yeah, and I'm asking God now what is happening here because now when we are taken by the the, the the police, uh, the police vehicle, the policeman vehicle, and taken to a police station, now uh, yeah, we slept there, you know, with our bags and everything, so that the, now the bus company can organize to send for us another bus. I, I took opportunity of encouraging people and ministering to them. I still have a number of what one of the person we were in that bus, and I ministered to them and encouraged them. And, and, and told them God is in control. And uh, where after that, now people are like, wow, we have a preacher in our midst at least. And one of the men said, wow, let, let us give an offering <laughs> from nowhere. So God organizes <laughs> for me a ministry in a police station. <laughs> And God tells me, I'm the one who has caused that bus to burn. It's for your good. So in the course of that, it's for my good. And, and you know, even the friends I called now, they began. when I told them I'm going for, for, um, for an international mission and I'm going by, by a bus, you know, those people have never gone to Congo by a bus. I have gone to, to Congo by a bus twice, actually, twice. Hallelujah. Those many days. And, and let me tell you. I don't know now, it, it, those days, it used to be many days getting there. Five days on the road, my God, it was bad. Gee, five days, a night after the other. Hey, it was many days, it was bad. So I, I, I'm like, God, so when I caught this, my friends, they, they began our sending men. When I had told them I'm going, nobody had given me any offering. But that, that, that time now, God now gathered. If you saw me, how I got to Uganda, to Kampara. <laughs> I don't know why I'm giving this testimony. Just to encourage you, if you saw how I got to Kampara, my God, I was even able to eat like, you know, like other people, even to take shower like other people, you know. And my God, God is amazing. Hallelujah. You know, then another journey, again to Rwanda, Kigali. And, you know, it's a journey, you know, those days. For the people who have been there, you know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. So what am I talking about? Don't give up in life. God still, you know, let, let me tell you, uh, one, one thing I have realized is that when God has a purpose with you, no matter what he allows, because let me tell you, nothing can happen in our lives if God has a purpose for you. And this is what I say in my nation, Kenya, unless God has a route. When you say God say, you know, I have a purpose for this, I have an agenda for these people, for this person, anything comes your way, God is in it. 
God is in it. God, Job was a lover of God. He was a righteous man. It is God who are out. And you, you have the scripture back up. It is God who are out. It, is, it was for, for his good because even the restoration that came at the end of the day, can you see? You know, by the way, we have never had such beautiful girls like, like what God gave, uh, you know, gave Job in his moment of restoration. So it is, uh, that's why Paul is saying in uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 28, and we know that all things work out for good. Hallelujah. So I, I, I'm still hearing this in the spirit. I don't know why God has allowed me to give this testimony, but this testimony is and what I'm handling here and there. You know, even for men of God out there, don't give up, don't give up and don't give in. We are in days where people are being recruited, you know, to, to getting powers of darkness, to gather multitudes and to get money and riches and all those things. I remember one of my son uh, telling me, you know, he carried somebody somewhere and somebody began introducing him to something. You know, you have to do this, this, this kind of a seed and take to this person, get the oil from a bottle of oil from them. And then when you just go and pour the, the, the door of the minister, I don't know, things that are not adding up because we have not read such, such, such things in the Bible. So where I, I was asking my son, so where is that oil is coming from? Where now people don't fast anymore. Somebody will not fast anymore. Don't pray anymore. You don't labor anymore. Just get this kind of, a, of an amount of money. I'm going to take you here. And that person is going to pray for you and give you a bottle of oil. The minute you apply your oil, that oil on your hands, the minute you pour that oil on the on the doorstep, I don't know of the of the of the church, people will just begin coming. So what is that? Or is that oil Holy Spirit? You know, you know, these are oils from hell. These, 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 these are oils because that is not the formula the word of God has given us. The Bible says when we lift up the name of Jesus, when we lift him, the son of man, hallelujah, he will pull men or he will gather for himself. He will pull men to himself. Hallelujah. So our work is to exhort him, our work is to honor him. Then he will do the, the gathering. Hallelujah. For his own glory. And he does that as he wills. Because why? You know, our... <clears throat> The lives of men, even even as we are ministering to you, you know, God is in the church. God is in the church, and He knows what I can handle at whatever time. He's the one who is gathering for Nehemiah. I mean, for for somebody like Gideon, and when the, the people are so many, you know, at the end of the day, God is doing the the lisha for Himself. God is reducing the number Himself. So these formulas that some of you have gotten from men, they are, they are not maintainable, and you realize now you become a slave of that man. After two years, again, you go and renew the covenant. They Give you the oil again. Now these things are not biblical. They are not biblical. And if if you have such kind of things even in your house, you know, for business, I don't know. You keep on renewing those covenants after two years and all of you. Um, and, and can I correct this? I, I had promised. I, I, I'm going to correct this. I want to make a warning. Those people who are using caps that have photos of men of God because they have told you to buy those caps with their photos that they'll be watching over you. That is idol worship. Those people who are using bed covers or bed sheets with the photos of any man or woman of God that they'll be watching over you at night. That is idol worship. There is no man or woman of God by their photos who has any power to watch over you by using their bed sheets. They are selling to you those bed sheets They're expensive and the caps very expensive and the calendars with their photos and everything that every calendar is representing an angel every page with a page of, with a photo is representing an angel for you now that is idol worship we don't have such kind of a thing you know in the bible where men of god where we are deposited in your houses and in your bedrooms with our stickers and, uh, and everything to be watching over you that is idol worship there's no scripture backup that is slavery spiritual spirit slavery we don't have such a thing in the Bible. It is not there. These are people who are manipulating the children of God and getting money, and they are just becoming wealthy. Some of you have become, you know, you, 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 are, you, you have become poor because when now they, they, they print those, uh, uh, you know, the, the bed covers and the bed sheets with their photos that they'll be watching over you that you cannot use any other bed cover or bed sheet with uh, unless that one. Now you become somebody's slave. You are no longer a, a son of God who is the head of the Spirit of God. You become a slave of another man which is not biblical that is demonic manipulation that is demonic manipulation hallelujah those stickers cannot watch over your business they have not any power they have no any power somebody's photo on some water has not any power to heal you has no any power jesus is telling the woman with the issue you are faith but you are faith hallelujah not 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 on somebody's photo 
not on somebody's photo. Somebody is about to tell me this is what the Spirit of God is telling me. Somebody is about to tell you. But Jesus said you shall do greater, not when you are abiding the, the destinies of the children of God and making money from them. And you are busy building and buying houses and lands and all of you, while the children of God are becoming poorer and poorer. Because you keep on merchandising the house of God using your photos. This is, this is wickedness. That is wickedness. Those stickers you people have and those oils and all those things. There is nowhere the Bible says we keep oils and we keep those things oils and whatever in our houses. There is nothing like that. The Spirit of God is enough. He's there to teach us, to counsel us, to do all those things. Hallelujah. Eh, eh, hallelujah. That's why the Bible says as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now people are being led by men. And uh, somebody has so many things. I was very shocked that uh, every calendar for every year you are even told not to throw them. It, every calendar is representing an angel. What is this? Is nonsense. Which scripture back up is this? And somebody is selling calendars to the children of God. Ex so much money. This is wickedness. This is wickedness. It is not biblical. It is wickedness. And this man, let me tell you, children of God, when you the Bible says every knee shall bow. When you allow the spirit of God to take over your life, you know, flash out the manipulation of men. Sit back this year. Sit back this season. I, I, avoid, you know, I, I, avoid the you know the the the, the theories and the, all the, the religious you know activities of men. Avoid that because why? That is too cumbersome. It is too cumbersome. Imagine you cannot. Even uh, use the, the sheets you want in your house or a bed cover you want in your house because somebody said, you know, I, I'm watching over you. Somebody is watching over a thousand people, two thousand people. They are not Holy Spirit. They are not Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. They cannot be here and there. They are not Holy Spirit. We don't, as servants of God, anointed by God, we don't have that ability. We don't have that ability. We don't have. Hallelujah. Others are being uh, being cursed. When you leave anybody who leaves this altar, they go and die, and people literally die. Others, you know, they have things, you know, I've encountered people who have things that are moving in their stomachs, and somebody you can literally see, I left that church, and, uh, you know, something began moving like a snake in my, in my stomach, and you can literally see it is moving, a snake is moving in somebody's stomach, you know, because we were told and, and nobody leaves that altar and remain the same. You must remain loyal there. That is bondage. That is, that is not what, and I keep on asking, why did Jesus go village to village and city to city? And did you know Jesus never began any, any church ministry and gave a name? He never did that. <coughs> he never did. I don't say it is bad because I also have. But then this biting of people, this biting of people and owning people and, uh, you know, manipulating people. We, with, with whatever we think we know and whatever we think, you know, it, it's just about us. May the Lord help us. So as I speak like this, as, I speak, as I've been speaking to so many of you, may you be delivered. Anything that is not scriptural, the Spirit of God should be able to, 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 to quicken you. This is not the voice of God. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. So you should be able, when I speak to you, you should be able to know, is this the voice of my Father? So that means even that the people, many, many people who are being manipulated is because what we are looking for, for God where he is not. We are looking for him where he is not because why? Somebody has told you this and somebody has told you this. So we are looking for God even before we sit back. These are days to test every spirit. Sit back in your house. Don't just run because another prophet has come. Don't just run because another church has been begun. Sit back in your house and test the spirit. That does not mean you are being suspicious, but it is good to be very sensitive in these end times. Very, very sensitive. Hallelujah. Oh my God. It's realized people are just becoming poorer and poorer. And the person who is leading you up there, he is just buying buildings and buying whatever, changing cars, yet you have no food in your house. Yet you keep on sitting and you keep all the years, 10 years and 7 years, 11 years. Nothing is changing in your life spiritually. Because if something is changing in life spiritually, if there is spiritual growth in your life, even physically, there should be growth. Because the spiritual world determines the physical life. Hallelujah. So we keep on correcting these things. Kindly this season, sit back. Sit back. Sit back and, uh, you know, ask yourself. Hallelujah. 
Because let me tell you, we have so many fallen clergy. We have so many fallen and uh, you know servants of God. They began in the spirit. We have so many. We are praying for them, but but uh, be very very careful as a person who is looking for God. Uh, you know, Abraham is told by God, go and sacrifice. And you know, leave your people. Uh, let's begin. Uh, let, let's begin the, in the book of Genesis chapter twelve. Leave your people. Leave your father's house. Your nation, brother, brother. Go to a land. I'll show you. So you know, there is God has already projected where He's taking Abraham. You, that he was Abram by that time when he's taking him. So he's coming to say that the Bible says, and God had spoken. You know, God had spoken. So God had already for a sin, for a new. Hallelujah. Where he was taking Abram, the Lord was already prepared. Amen. So, and that's why you see the Lord was, was created before Adam was created. So that is that is the order. God is very orderly, very, very orderly. Hallelujah. So what do we see? Uh, Abraham had to fit in. It was his responsibility. It was his, uh, you know, his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his duty to, to fit into that which God wanted to do with his life and in his life. Hallelujah. So it calls for personal, it is called personal commitment, personal responsibility, personal determination. Because why? It is my journey with him. It is my destiny with God. Before now you follow the multitudes, think about me. Think about yourself. Hallelujah. And it's going to be very easy for you. It's going to be very easy for you in this season in Jesus' name. So what do we see? God has a specific. He's telling, and the one thing I am getting surprised about when I read that story, God is not telling Abraham, turn to the right. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 1, we see when, uh, you know, when, uh, when the children of Israel, you know, scattered around the mountain, you know, for a very long time after coming from Egypt, God is coming to Moses and says, ah, you have been here for a very long time. You know, turn to, turn, 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 turn to the north. North, you know, goes out there. God is giving direction. For Abraham, there's no direction. Leave and go. Hallelujah. So he's not told from your father's house, turn left or turn right. So it caused just, you know, God was just waiting and looking for that. Arise, leave, pack and go. You know, and then from there, God is ordering his steps. And that is God for you. So that, that agreeing in his heart. You know, I have now I have to arise and get out of the gate here and get, get out of this nation here and go not to the land God will show me. Hallelujah. N number two, we see when God wants Abraham to give a sacrifice, he's telling him, go to the mountain, I will show you. There's a mountain. Hallelujah. Go to them. And the Bible says after three days, Abraham sees the mountain Moriah from afar. You know, so there's, oh, there was, there were other mountains, you know, there were other hills and all those places. God would have even asked Abraham, you know, you know, when God asked for, 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 for sacrifice from Abraham, you know, he would have told him, you know, do it here. But God is a God of specification. He knew where I'm going to provide for Abraham for myself is on that mountain Moriah. Hallelujah. And what do we see? People like, uh, there are so many stories in the Bible. You know, God is a God of specification. God is a God of seasons and times. You know, God is a God of... So many of us, we have been sacrificing to God where he has not told us, where he has not... You know, he has not instructed us, where he has not... Even what he has not asked... Okay, we, we, you know, he's a father, depending on the way you relate with him, because me, I relate with him as a, my personal father. Hallelujah. You know, uh, so uh, God is not, Jehovah Jireh is not being seen in our lives because we are, we are on, sacrificing on the wrong mountain. That's why somebody will come to you and tell you, you know, I've, I've paid my tithe faithfully. I've been sweeping the house of God. I've been serving God. Nothing is changing. You know, 11 years, 20 years. Hallelujah. My God, hallelujah. Let me tell you, who took you to that mountain? Who sent you there? Who asked you for the for the for the car? I told you of stories of people who have who are told to give their Isaac, sacrifice their Isaac, and no, no, Isaac was not killed. God provided a sheep for the sacrifice, and somebody tells you sacrifice your Isaac on this altar. So you give your your, your house tied to deed, you give your car and everything. It's not bad to give all those things if the Lord has asked you to give on a specific altar, on a, on, a, on a specific man or woman of God or somebody or a brother or a sister, you know, as the Lord has led you. 
you know, that cause was the sensitivity. Do you know there were so many other men passing by in Shunam, Shunem? But uh, this woman, the Shunamite woman, the Bible says, she perceived this is a man of God. And she's offering something, you know, for the man of God, even a, a, a shelter for the man of God. And there is a change. That encounter road, there is a change. Can you see what, uh, what, um, what, what uh, you know, Elijah is doing to that widow? And, you know, for about two days, the Spirit of God has been teaching me that story. Do you know the, the, the Bible says there were other widows, there were so many other widows, but there was that specific. And, you know, God never described to Elijah, she's dark, she's yellow, you'll find her doing this. Uh -uh. The, when Elijah began the journey of going as God instructed, you know, hallelujah. So any other thing, God is ordering. God is ordering. So many of us are still stuck where God is part. I mean, God spoke. So God instructed. So nothing is moving because we never moved. So nothing is changing in our lives. Nothing is moving. And we keep on now looking for confirmation and confirmation. Years are going. Days are going. Nothing is moving because we are still stuck where God spoke. So when God instructed Elijah, go to, to, the, to, to, to Sarafat, I have commanded a widow. So when Elijah agreed with God and began moving, you remember he ate food that kept him 40 days and 40 nights. My God, we need that kind of food <laughs> in our days. Hallelujah. Because the journey was long. The angel told him the journey is still long. Hallelujah. So what do we see? It, 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 there is no chancing here. Elijah bumps on the exact widow, and there were so many other widows, but he bumps on that exact widow. And what do we see? He's asking, uh, the woman is like, uh, he asks for water. Uh, as the woman is going to get the water, uh, a little uh, you know, uh, fry, and uh, we eat, and with my son, we die. Uh, Elijah is, uh, beg for me first. Hallelujah. <coughs> Sorry, beg for me first. Hallelujah. And what do we see? You know, that, that encounter alone is causing a shift. Because why? It was commanded of the Lord. Even how Elijah is behaving, it is commanded of the Lord. Did you realize that the woman is not arguing with the man of God? Because why? That whole episode is divinely orchestrated. Now, that is how you know. That is how you know this is the burden of God. This is the, uh -uh. can you see now what is the change and what is happening in the life of the, the Shunammite woman? There was no child. These people were elderly. And what do we see? A boy is born. The boy dies. The man of God is still there connected to this family. And the boy comes back to life. There's supposed to be famine in that land. So go and sojourn in the land with your family. So these people are, you know, they are rescued from a famine for seven years. Can you see the whole, you know, there's no confusion in the life of that family how God is orchestrating things and shaping up things because why they are connected to the right grace in their lives in Jesus name so as we continue complaining and murmuring and complaining to God father I've been doing this and praying on this mountain who told you that is his mountain because somebody has called it prayer mountain who told you that's God's mountain we, that's your father's mountain so we we need to, we need to be you know this these are days to be very very alert I, now God took over my everything now. I'll just allow me to flow. So these are the days to be very, very alert. These are the days to be very, very alert. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, and, and I want to stop it there for this night. I want to stop it there for this night. I'll come live tomorrow on YouTube and Facebook and I'll handle what I wanted to handle today. Now, the Spirit of God just took it over to a very different direction. And I hear the Spirit of God say it was needful that you I restore order in the church of Jesus Christ. It was very, very needful. Hallelujah. Do you know there were so many rivers where Naman. You know, remember that story of Naaman when the, the, the girl from Israel is exposing, uh, you know, uh, the matter and telling them, introducing a prophet in, in their land uh, to Naaman and the family, Company Limited. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you know there were so many other rivers? Actually, he's asking, why well, there are no better rivers? You know, why, why should I go to Jordan? Because why? That is where your healing is. So not every prophet is sent to you. Not every seer is sent to you. Not everybody. And I want you also to caution. Nowadays, people are killing their spouses. Not every widow is there for you to give because they are saying they are widows. Hallelujah. Not every orphan is meant to be taken care of by you. Not every needed person should receive something from your heart. So we need to be very alert. We need to be very alert. Hallelujah. We have genuine widows and we have very fake widows. You know, we have very fake widows. You know, nowadays we have very fake widows. 
I have, I have, I have case scenarios in my life of men, even men of God, who just you know contributed to the death of your wives. I have, you know, we we know, we know it's not a secret. Is this there? Hallelujah. Somebody mishandling you know their spouses to a point of death. I have, you know, I told you last year, you know what happened. I it pained me to death. And somebody now goes there with the, with the, the, the clergy now gathers, you know, to bury this person and they put a collar on her and the, the priesthood garment. Yet they could not even allow her to preach even one sermon, even to serve on the water. Then the woman of God was anointed. You know, she was depressed to death, to death. But I had warned her not to die. Refuse to die. <laughs> Refuse to die. Do the, the, the escape like Joseph. Where you, you know, you, because let me tell you, it is true you are going to make it to heaven, but then prematurely, uh, prematurely, because we had some some assignment to accomplish. So don't allow don't allow anybody and things, you know, to take you out of the purpose of God. Don't allow, don't allow any boss. This is what we are seeing in Babylon. Daniel, they are not allowing the king to to push them out of the purpose of God. Don't allow situations and circumstances to drive you out of the purpose of God. Hallelujah. So I want to finish this uh, morning. It's morning in my country. Don't give up and don't give in. Don't give up and don't give in. Let us wait and see what the Lord is accomplishing with our destinies in Jesus' name. So we are in chapter two of the of the season of the seven years that God has given us uh, from 2023. And uh, year 2024 is a chapter two of the same. So the, 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 the page is already, you know, flapped over. It is a uh, chapter two. So we are scripting a fresh with God and I, I'll be telling us the demand of the hour and what the Lord is expecting of us we shall have some moment of some days uh, to do the same I have my notes ready but one thing I want us to know this is a day a season or a moment to remain I know uh, holding on to your faith your faith is the currency of transaction in this hour your faith move by faith I've been telling the church, if there's a dream you have had in the Lord, if there is a vision you have had in the Lord, this is the best moment to be able to do it. This is the best moment. And we are going to enjoy the case scenario of, uh, of Isaac, you know, in the book of Genesis chapter 26. That is where we are. We shall enjoy the backup of heaven more than ever before. Hallelujah. So we are, we are in a season, I hear the Spirit of God say, you know, the first will be last. So the people you thought and whatever you thought is ahead there. Now, God is about to, I, I see like a, a case scenario of a balloon, you know, that has been, that has pressure. You know, I see, this is how you're about to see in whatever you thought is ahead of you there. Whatever you thought, you know, it, it has, you know, it, it is growing and growing. You know, some of these things are, some businesses, hallelujah, some ministries, they are just, they're about to be reduced to nothing. Hallelujah. And God is going to deliver the souls of men and connect them in the book of Jeremiah chapter 23 and connect them to the priest, you know, the righteous branch, you know, that he has ordained for this hour in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So my prayer for each one of us is that we shall remain humble. I'll be talking to us from the book of Ezra tomorrow and uh, kindly study the book of Ezra. We shall be talking some things from there by the grace of God and the name of the Lord will be glorified. Allow me to tell you good morning for those who are waking up and for those who are in night, kindly have yourself a good night. We catch up tomorrow. We shall come live on all the social media platforms from tomorrow. We shall come live by the grace of God. Invite somebody. What time it is? For, what time will you come live, prophetess? From 11, from uh, 11.45. 11.45 because I have programs in the course of the week that add up there. So I don't want disruption. So from 11.45 for some days, we shall talk as the Lord is leading us all the way to 12.45. They are about up, maybe up to 1 a.m. We shall have a journey by the grace of God. Remain prayed up and remain in faith. Start by faith, move by faith, operate in faith. You are going to enjoy the faithfulness of God. God bless you. Shalom.